So while we've been here today, we've kind of been going over various um, discipline techniques. We've gone over the four C's to discipline. We've learned key ingredients for being a great parent. Um, and the other night I had this visual in my sleep. I did it the other day for the first time. And I kind of wanted to give it to you because it's a visual representation of discipline and what we as parents do right or wrong. And I just kind of wanted to give that to you today. Um, by the way, I called my mom uh, at Thursday at like four o'clock and said, mom, I need bricks. <laughs> uh, because what daughter doesn't call for ask and ask for bricks? I clearly do. And she had them at my house <laughs> uh, on my front porch by five o'clock. No questions asked. So everyone needs you to find a mom or be the kind of mom that drops everything and grabs you bricks. So today I brought bricks as my representation. So kind of what we're gonna talk about today is when a situation happens, um, how we respond to that and what that does to the child. Um, so I want you to imagine whether it's your foster child, your biological child, your adopted child, someone you're working with, a school student, who that is. I mean, I want you to imagine a situation arises that you're gonna have to jump in, you're gonna have to take action, and you're gonna have to discipline them. So kind of picture a student or a child in your mind, and I want you to physically picture them holding these. Um, and so we're gonna start off like this. I'm gonna take this brick, and this is gonna be the representation of the situation that happens. Whatever that situation is, maybe they didn't listen, maybe they argued back, whatever that is. So they have that brick. Well, then you get on to them. So of course they have like, guilt maybe, um, maybe they're angry with you. They're probably confused because like we talked about, anger is a secondary emotion and kids kind of, you know, they just don't really get this. So maybe they're just confused with emotions um, and maybe they're just, just the whole situation. Maybe they're tired. We kind of don't know what we're feeling. So I kind of want you to imagine that picture right now of you getting onto a kid and they're holding these bricks. So these kids are holding these bricks, that's happening. This is a kid without trauma, without any previous thing happening in their life. So now I wanna add this example and make it a little bit bigger for you in your mind. So let's talk about a kid who's had previous trauma before. Well, they already come in holding bricks. Before the situation even occurs, they're coming in with foster care maybe. They're gonna have attachment issues and they're just gonna have trauma. And I want you to think about that. So that kind of changes everything already. When we have trauma kids who have come from hard places, they're already carrying bricks. This is really important to know because they're already irritable, like we talked about with the um, brain stem um, and the reptile brain. They're already in defense mode, guys. They're already there because they're upset. However, they're not the only ones in the party. So the point I wanna to prove today is that we also, we as parents, guardian, whatever that may be, teachers, we come in. So when we address the situation, here are their bricks and here are ours. Maybe as a foster parent or adoptive parent, we have secondary trauma. That's a real thing. Um, maybe we are mad at the situation or maybe we're just power struggling. Whatever that is, we come into the situation with bricks. So here we are, we're dealing with a kid in a situation. They have their bricks, we have our bricks. And this is what it looks like, the two different ways you can handle a situation. As parents, we often um, go into a power struggle with kids, not because we think they're in charge, or but sometimes it's just out of straight panic. I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel like I just have to prove a point that I'm right. So I enter the situation and probably not the best way possible. And I might scream, guys, but I want you to see what happens when I scream. If I'm screaming at my kid, guess what? That's adding my brick on them. Maybe I'm shaming them and telling them I'm disappointed in their behavior and how dare they. And maybe I'm just saying ugly things to them. Look guys, did I stack my bricks on them? And the worst part of this is I walk away expecting this child to deal with it themselves. I expect them and I say, here, hold my bricks too. While I'm off in the corner and I'm saying, got them, I told them, I taught them. When did we teach them anything? Because they're too concerned with what's happening and too confused that they have no idea what you just taught them and what you just did. And we're guilty of this. We're guilty of shaming and yelling and degrading all to make us feel better. And at what point is that helping? 
It's not. So let's kind of start over with what it would look like if we handled this the right way. There's a lot of various um, parenting techniques out there, um, but kind of like the three C's is what I like, or the four C's is like what I like to go back to and making sure um, we have compassion in there and consistency um, and just being conscious. Um, and so I just want to imagine us going into this situation, whether we're frustrated or not, we've probably calmed ourselves down by now because that's what we want to do. Um, disciplining is, and anger is never appropriate. Um, it's never going to help us. It's never going to help them. Um, so I want you to imagine the situation happens. Um, you are aware of your bricks. You are aware of what you bring to the table. You are aware of that. And we're going to approach the situation, and this is what we're going to do this time, y'all. First, we're going to give them compassion. We're going to meet them where they're at and give them compassion. And then we're going to validate their emotions. Oh, it is so frustrating when something happens. It's hard. And then maybe we deep breathe with them for a second and we're going to role model that way to calm down. Maybe that's what we're going to do. Maybe we just give them the benefit of the doubt. Whatever we're doing, as long as we're being consistent, I want you to see what happens here. Instead of giving bricks, we take bricks. And I'm going to leave some there because some of those bricks aren't going to get taken immediately, right? We have some deep-seated bricks with kids who come from hard places, um, whatever that hard place might be. Um, and those are bricks that could be taken care of over a period of time. But look at what we did take from that. And then the final point I want to leave you with today, as we look at this, and I want you to sit here and think like, this is the difference, guys. This is what it means to be a parent or a good teacher or caregiver or whatever. It's being willing to accept your bricks, know them, but carry the child's as well. So the last thing I kind of want to leave you with today is that it doesn't, your bricks don't have to stay like this. You know, I talked earlier about the realness of secondary trauma and compassion fatigue. And that's something I think you all need to check out. It's something I have. And so I want to know who's carrying your bricks. Is it, because these can go away. Maybe you go to a therapist, you know. Maybe you get involved in a Bible study at church. I personally am a believer, um, and I'm glad that I believe in a higher power because uh, I love handing God these bricks and I don't have to. But I want you to sit here and I want you to examine what are the various things I can give up in my life and who's going to help me carry these bricks? Maybe it's your tribe. Maybe it's a group of friends. But I'm going to leave you with this today is who is going to help you carry your bricks so you don't have to lay them on your child. Thank you. Have a good night.